Hi, this is Simon Obstel, and welcome to another tutorial in my ongoing series on blend modes and the secret science behind them. And today we're going to be taking a look at what I think is the most surprising blend mode of all. And it's surprising because it's got the most boring name you could imagine, and it's the blend mode you're using all the time without even thinking about it. And that is normal. And the reason we don't think it's interesting is because it just seems so obvious. If you put one image on top of another, of course you're going to see that image and it's going to obscure the image behind it. But what seems totally obvious and intuitive is in fact somewhat counterintuitive and genuinely interesting. So let's get into it. So I've got this desert as my background and over the top of it I'm going to add this image here. As you can see this has got an alpha channel so if we isolate it that's what it looks like in terms of colour, that's its transparency and here is the alpha channel itself. So let's go back to colour. Then if we unisolate that we get this composite. So we're using the normal mode and Obviously, you know, normal, you stick anything with alpha over the top of something else and you'll see through the opaque areas of the alpha and not through the transparent areas of the alpha. All very simple, but actually under the hood, normal is a little bit more complicated than you'd think and actually genuinely surprising. So we're going to close that down and we're going to actually build it ourselves. So here is this rather splendid photo of this guy from pexels.com as was the desert. I'll put you links in the description. I'll also give you links to the mat. So here is our old guy in a group of his own. There's our desert in a group of its own behind it. And I've got the mat down here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it into the old guy group and in order to cut out the old guy I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And then you can see we've got the old guy cut out against black. So let's take a moment to consider why that is. Black has a value of zero and any pixel that you multiply by zero is going to turn zero and therefore black. Conversely, white has a value of one and any pixel that you multiply by white is going to stay its original colour. So just to restate the obvious, multiply anything by zero and it's going to become zero. Multiply anything by one and it's going to remain its original value. So let's carry on. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a clone of this mat and I'm going to bring it into the desert group. And you'll see that also has got multiply on it because I haven't changed the blend mode for that. So if we disable the old guy there, you can see now we've got the mat applied to our desert. But what we actually want to do with this version of the mat is we want to invert it. So we can do that by coming to colour and negative. So now you'll see we've got a black hole where our foreground should be. And we can easily fill that. So let's turn back on our old guy group. There he is. And we're going to turn this group to add. And now we've got our composite back and if we compare it to the original it's exactly the same. I'm toggling it and you can't tell the difference. So there you go. That is how the normal blend mode works and this is happening under the hood. So in this version here we think that the transparency is being just provided by this magical thing called transparency but actually that process of multiplying by the alpha channel is actually happening invisibly within the normal blend mode. So let's take a look at a schematic for that. The normal blend mode is the foreground multiplied by the alpha channel plus the background multiplied by the inverted alpha channel. So the multiplied in each case is the multiply blend mode and the plus is the add blend mode. And that's how we get to the normal blend mode. And as you can see, it's got nothing to do with transparency. It's just a basic piece of arithmetic. So I want to show you one thing before we finish, which is that we can process the alpha channel and change the composite. So let's just turn this one off and come back to our main version here. So I deliberately made a clone of the mat in order that we could do this. 
So I'm going to select this one here, the one on the old guy, come to filters and color and levels. And then if we adjust the levels like this, you can see we can actually get rid of that softness. So the softness is actually the gray of the mat. We just look at the mat on its own now we've done that. You can see we've sharpened it up with that levels process. So we've crunched in the blacks and we've crunched in the whites. And now we've got a much harder mat like that. We can almost go completely hard with it like that. And you can see we've got a nice sharp cut out here instead of that soft one. Admittedly, all the angles have gone soft, but that's just the nature of it being blurred in the first place. But we've restored the sharpness to the mat and we've restored the sharpness by removing the gray, by turning all the gray, either black or white. So this is a very, very useful and important trick to know. So if we come back to our compare group, we can do the same thing here with this version that's got embedded alpha. So we can do that again by using a color levels, but this time we can't actually affect the RGB. We actually have to affect the alpha. So let's choose that from here. And we can do the same thing of bringing these controls together like this to create a sharp cutout. And just to confirm all of this one final time, I want to come back to our own version here. And if we turn off our old guy group, you can see we've got that sharp cutout of the desert that matches the sharp cutout of the old guy. And that's really important. It's really important that these two should actually be in sync. If I were to move one of these mats, you can see what's happening. You can see that they have to be identical for this composite to work, or rather identical, but opposite. And it works because, again, just to run over this one more time, if we switch this old guy back to normal, you can see that that multiply has cut him out against black. And if we turn him off and look at our desert, you can see we've got that black hole where the foreground should be. And what we're simply doing is we're adding in the foreground because everything that's black in the foreground has a value of zero. and is not going to affect the background when we add it. And similarly, everything that's black in the background will not be affected by adding in the foreground. So if we were to turn off the mat for the background, oh, sorry, we need to switch this back to add. If we were to turn off the, the mat for the background, you can see the issue. That's why we have to cut it out because we have to create a, a black hole for this foreground to sit in. So I hope I've gone over that in enough different ways for you to be able to understand it. It's a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with it, but it's very, very important. And one of the key reasons why it's important is that it enables you to get a handle on the very tricky topic of pre-multiplication, which trips a lot of people up if they don't understand this core process of the normal blend mode. And I might try to do a tutorial on that at some point. But anyway, I hope what I've shown you here has been interesting and useful. So thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon.